Hi, I'm Dr. Walter Crean, and I get the privilege of talking with this brilliant man, Professor Gilles-Arit Seralini, who many of you probably know because Professor Seralini did the original research on Roundup causing tumors in animals that made the rounds of, of, of the news. And he has uh, continued this work. Um, I don't know if you're part uh, pit bull, but you sure do grab onto something and stick with it, don't you, Professor? <laughs> Well, our work has been confirmed because we've published in uh, scientific reports Nature uh, last year, uh, that at the beginning of last year, uh, that the whole metabolism of the rats was disturbed by Roundup and by GMOs. And we've explained very precisely all the things. And with the Monsanto papers, it has been confirmed that there was a big uh, dishonesty and fraud against us, 18 black files against me, uh, showing that, uh, I mean, all the debates around the truth of our papers was uh, in fact organized by Monsanto and co-workers. So, <laughs> not surprising, but a lot of journalists didn't know, so it's good to know that Oh, you know, let's make you have the documentation. As uh, I've been uh, looking recently at the very few papers that have been published on glyphosate in first in urine in humans and then in food and water, what I was amazed at was the paucity of research out there. Uh, for instance, the FDA total diet survey is not looking at glyphosate in foods, and that is because Monsanto said glyphosate is the active ingredient, when in fact it is not, and because they said that, and it's got by itself such low toxicity, it is considered not to be a problem, so it is not being measured, which puts all of us at great risk and since they did not disclose that the active ingredient, as in your recent article, uh, polyoxyethylene amines are the most toxic component to, to uh, living cells as well as to plants, then we're left not knowing where polyoxyethylene amine is in our food and water. Yes, in fact, we've discovered that together with glyphosate it are always associated a lot of petroleum residues, toxic ones that have been burned, oxidized, which are called these POEA compounds. It's a family of burned petroleum oxidized residues together with heavy metals and arsenic, which are in petroleum actually, and uh, we have found that in all glyphosate-based herbicides, these compounds were present. And they are a lot more toxic together than glyphosate alone, which is the only one to be tested on the long term by Monsanto and, by, and uh, revised by authorities, just because uh, they have declared this uh, toxic ingredient alone. And that's a fault or a fraud, uh, justice has to decide. Yeah, and now you, one of your recent articles, um, a brilliant article, of course, had four, basically four parts to it. And in the first part, you had tomato plants and you right. either get you, uh, the control was to apply water, which I'm sure they all got, and then glyphosate alone, and then one of three different Roundup products, there are three different of the major Roundup uh, that are sold, and then you had the polyoxyethylene amine. And it was clear from that experiment that the polyoxyethylene amine was the major herbicide component because that plant died like right away. That's and then right. of the three Roundup uh, products, one was, quite herbicidal, the other one pretty herbicidal, and the third one kind of, 
And then glyphosate, nothing happened to the plant. So you showed there that there was like zero herbicide effect of glyphosate, which again begs the question, why does Monsanto say that's the actual, you know, main ingredient, the active ingredient? Yes. Um, you described the, the experiment pretty well. The thing is that nobody has tested that before, and it's very surprising because everybody, every farmer talks about glyphosate, but never tested it alone. Uh, hidden poisons are always associated with it. And I do not restrict this rezoning to POEA because, um, in fact, POEA is a model compound, uh, which is one of the main petroleum-based residues, but there are many others. And POEA is, in fact, a family, uh, easily available, but a family of compound. But yes, we saw that we are in the wrong debate just because NGOs and Monsanto are repeating the same thing and journalists. Glyphosate is an herbicide and is the active ingredient of Roundup, but nobody tested that uh, except Monsanto maybe and us. <laughs> so this is why it is important. Glyphosate is not available for, um, it, glyphosate is not uh, available for um, farmers by uh, itself by itself only right. for labs yeah for research labs and then you did a cell study on um with the uh, same compounds and uh, same compounds on embryonic uh, kidney cells and tell us the results of that and again the petroleum based residues are the most toxic glyphosate is almost non toxic or over um at very high levels that allows uh, the government and Monsanto to require very high uh, residues in the food, uh, possible in the food. Uh, but the hidden poisons again are up to 100,000 times more toxic than glyphosate alone on human cells. So we do think that um, glyphosate is a good marker in order to know, because it's an easy marker now, you cannot really well assay petroleum, all the petroleum-based compounds in uh, the food. However, um, it hides very toxic compounds that are at least 1,000 times or 10,000 times more toxic. So uh, the admissible uh, residual level should be divided by 1,000 at least. Now, the, the third part of the study was actually looking at how well these uh, compounds inhibited aromatase, which yes. is a very important enzyme for proper hormone production and hormone management. And can you tell us about the outcome of that? Um. The aromatase uh, helps to produce sexual and to convert sexual hormones and making estrogens, which are necessary for uh, the normal libido and uh, even in men and for normal spermatogenesis. So if you inhibit aromatase, this may have endocrine and nervous effects. The endocrine effects are on the sexual uh, reproduction, but also, also sexual behavior, and on, uh, in general, in birds or insects, on reproduction. So that means on biodiversity. So um, aromatase is also the main enzyme disturbed in 60% of breast cancers. So uh, that could promote breast tumors, uh, if uh, aromatase is disturbed. So uh, we think today that below toxic levels, uh, the hidden poisons together with glyphosate uh, promote uh, hormonal diseases, mm -hmm. including uh, the so-called hormonal disrupting effects and nervous uh, disruptions.
Yeah, now you found that the including autism, for instance. Yeah, you found that all of those compounds, the three roundups, the polyoxyethylene amine and the glyphosate, all inhibited aromatase at levels, at least for the roundup and the and the POEA, far below the levels at which they would kill cells. Yes. We've measured that the endocrine disruption uh, was observed in vivo in mammals at 0.1 per per billion. Uh, so this is a level that shouldn't be, um, that, that is authorized in tap water in uh, Europe. And uh, over this level, you can have endocrine disruption when we give on a long term at 0.1 ppb roundup to animals, they have tumors and they have liver and kidney problems uh, that provoke death. So this is the one instance where we, you have found that glyphosate by itself has adverse effect, while the yeah. others, the, the roundup components, the glyphosate-based herbicides, have even more powerful uh, yes, right. inhibition, plus they've got cytotoxicity, plus they've got um, carcinogenesis. We cannot say that glyphosate is uh, innocent or is uh, safe by itself. However, we can say that the hidden poisons uh, that are always associated with it are 1,000 times more toxic uh, than what the authorities say. So uh, the authorizations of glyphosate-based herbicides are uh, fraudulent today. Right, and in this article, I believe that the difference in effect on aromatase inhibition between glyphosate and the POEA, that the POEA was over 3,000 times more potent in that effect than glyphosate itself. That's right, and POEA is with a lot of pesticides, not only glyphosate. So our major conclusion is that we should get rid of all pesticides at a time or another in order to promote organic agriculture without pesticides. So as I, as I mentioned, I've been looking at the articles on glyphosate residue in foods, and and in water. So the, the glyphosate residue in food, we should assume, or should we assume, that POEA and these other toxic components of glyphosate-based herbicides are present in that food yes. along with the glyphosate? They should be in higher quantities, but they are really hard to measure because there are no standard uh, methods to measure them. They are linked with other compounds. However, they are um, more important than glyphosate in quantity in, uh, generally, and they come from many pesticides. So yes, they should be in our food and in our drinks. We, wherever uh, the marker glyphosate is, at least. So glyphosate is a strongly water-soluble compound, while the POEAs are from petroleum. So there is, I was astounded to see that glyphosate is found literally around the world in all samples of, or in a, in a high percentage of groundwater sources from wells, uh, surface water, uh, lakes, rivers, streams, ocean water, rainfall, and of course, bottled water. So we should assume that the glyphosate in water does have these more toxic uh, contaminants with it. Yes, because they are always associated with it. Well, Professor, thank you so much for your time this morning. It's been fantastic, and I just cannot thank you enough for the, your work. I, I would like to... Um, you have led the way here around glyphosate research, and that is so valuable to the entire humankind. Thank you. I would like to uh, open a window, a new window, 
We, together with Chef and with winemakers, we have tested a lot of pesticides in water and in wine. And you know that most of them were able to taste the pesticides. And we just published that recently in a book in French uh, that we would like to be translated in English and also in a scientific paper that I can send Wonderful, you. wonderful. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you so much, Professor. Have a, have a nice day now. Bye-bye. Bye. At the Environmental Health Symposium 2016, we brought over Professor Gilles Eric Seralini and had the privilege of hearing him deliver three excellent presentations. Those presentations were videoed and are available for purchase. If you would like to avail yourself of this fantastic experience, you can go to environmentalhealthsymposium.com. When you get there, just click on conference videos and you can scroll down and you'll see myself Dr. and Dr. Patrick presenting Professor Seralini with the Theo Colburn Award. Then just click on the EHS 2016 on Vimeo and you can get those wonderful presentations for yourself. If you would like to hear my podcasts reviewing glyphosate in urine, glyphosate in food and water, those are available at crinianopinion.com.